Hello. So you're saying to yourself, self, what the hell are these? Well, these are Western Electric telephones, and in the year 2013, landline phones are pretty much going away because everybody has cell phones and smartphones. So if you're interested in seeing my collection, and I collect these, and I have to confess, I still do have a landline because I do like corded sound quality. Um, you know, I, I don't really use these, but I collect them, and um, you know, I, I still am a landline user and I'm a collector. So uh, this, these are phones I've picked up over the years. I would say probably over the last 25, 30 years, just things that I've acquired. So for starters, this is a Western Electric, um, like an extension phone. It doesn't have an actual dial pad on it. You can see though there's an indentation where you could remove that and put a dial pad. I got this from a friend in high school and he gave it to me and I wired it up. See it says Western Electric and I kid you not it actually works. It actually works. You can pick it up and you can pick up and speak and, and hear a conversation. You just can't dial from it. But It's got a, cord, a cloth cord and um, it's very very old. I don't think it's really worth anything in its current condition but um, this is the oldest phone that I have. I'm thinking that's maybe 30s, 40s, somewhere in the, the older vintage there. Okay, I'm now going to go and talk about a rotary desk model phone. Now this one has a number one on it because in college we had an intercom system and we had rotary phones that were hooked up and we could call each other um, in the house that we lived in so it was kind of a fun thing that I had wired up. Anyways, this particular phone um, these are all pretty much the same. This is the model 500DM. What's interesting is anything Western Electric is going to have a date code on almost all the parts. And, and back in the day, before you bought your own equipment, this is before the divestiture in the 80s, you would go and you'd get your phones, you'd come home and you'd plug them in, and if you had a problem, you'd bring them back to the phone store, the, the Illinois Bell store, or you know, whatever your local Bell was, and then they would switch out the parts or they'd fix them or they'd refurbish these. But what's interesting is there's a date code on almost every piece. So this earpiece is from 1981. Let's see how old the mouthpiece is. Usually they never match because these, these are, parts have been repurposed like crazy. This one is from 7 of 1966. So, interesting here, we've got a, a you know, a 15 year span and who knows what the parts are inside this phone. But it's just interesting to, to, to note that you'll never have phones that are all made from the same parts lot because these are pieced together as things were, were broken and repaired. Here's the Princess phone. Princess phone um, always has a handset that, go, that goes over the dial. Um, this one's kind of discolored, but this is a um, it's bell system, and you'll see here this is from 1968. The thing about the Princess phone is that the dial lit up, and there's actually the, the bulb right here. You could take out the 12-volt bulb, but the, but the dial light for the Princess phone was not powered from the phone line. It was powered from one of these little transformers and this is a Western Electric transformer okay this puts out uh, I think it puts out about 8 volts I think maybe 12 volts but anyways you hook this up and you plug this in somewhere in your house and it uses the two wires that are, are not primary phone wire lines I mean this is these aren't the these are not the voice circuit lines these are two other wires within all the cords on your phone what it would do is it would power the phone so the, the actual light so if, if this got knocked out or went out the phone would still work but you just would, would lose your dial light okay. here is the desk model version touch tone similar to the rotary version that we just looked at okay all this stuff says Bell System Property, not for sale and such, because before the divestiture, obviously people didn't own these. Um, after the Bell split off and you could buy your own equipment, then they, they ended up selling these to, to consumers. So um, let's take a look and just see for kicks. Now this one doesn't seem to have a date code on it. So who knows why? I just find it interesting because it, it just tells you a little bit of history about the phone and how old it might be and where it went. Um, okay, this one has a speaker from 915 of 76. So that's from 76. 
and yeah, there's no code on the back of this. But anyways, this one has a, you know, this one pieced together from, from parts over the years that and customers have, have returned it. Here's another princess phone. This is a touch tone version, and this was blue. It's a little bit faded, but uh, lighted keypad. Same thing as the other one. You have a bulb, and then you'd use the transformer somewhere in your house to power this. Um, this one is from... 1980. Who knows what the other pieces are? You notice something about these phones? They all ring. No, that one didn't. But these are all Bell phones, and that's um, you know that was that was typical back in the day for these. Okay, um, back in the 60s, I don't think this is 50s, but I think it's 60s. But this is an old Bell system logo. This is a speakerphone module. And what you do is you, this one actually has to be hardwired in, so maybe it's from an office phone. Not sure, but it has a volume knob. And you could use this as a speakerphone. And this is actually from May of 1970. Um, yeah, but it does say, sorry for the, the, the zooming in, it's because obviously I, I'm using my hand and then doing this at the same time, but that's a bell system. Um, I've never actually used this, but I'm sure it does work because all of these phones, um, they, they, they don't stop working. They're, they're made very well. This I picked up at a thrift store, and this is from the uh, some, sometime in the 80s, I would, I would suspect, but it's a kind of like a futuristic phone. It's a different type of handset, but the keypad is the same form factor and the same connector that you would see in here, except it's black. And back here... Yeah, I don't can't really read that date code on it, but you'll see it has the same type of this right here is your bell loudness um, adjuster, and they're pretty much all the same. Well, actually, this one's a little different here. This one has a loud and soft, but um, when we get into some of the other phones, you'll see this white thing right here, which is your loudness adjuster for the bell. So, all you kiddies out there that never had a chance to use a landline phone, this is how you configure them. <laughs> Okay, we're now going to get into um, trim line. Okay, this one's actually pretty dirty. This is called the Bell System Trim Line. And um, I don't know what year this would be. This code's a little bit cryptic. Um, I'm guessing it's not 1957. I'm going to guess it's from 83 based on that number. And then there's your loudness for your bell sound. Um, there you go, Western Electric. But anyways... Here's your rotary version, and the dial light actually lit up on this too. Um, but I don't think this required the 12 volt power. This actually was powered by the phone line itself, and that's the hang up button here. If you were to take this apart, you would find a microphone just like this inside of here, and you'd find this exact same speaker from the other phone right behind here, and you'll see some of it shining actually. It's because I use the same parts as I said, and then. If you broke this and you took it in, they just swap it out with another one and then put a new shell or housing on it and give it to somebody else. Here is the wall mount version, and you'll notice here that um, there's this thing right here, and that's because you would put this on the wall and then it would hook. Um, you didn't see too many of these, and there's a lot of different ways you can mount phones, but this one, um, here's the bell adjuster right here. And actually, this was one that my parents bought. This is a sticker that they gave you. So after the divestiture, when you actually bought these, you'd put this over the, the not for sale or the do not sell sticker. But this is actually a um, from the store because we, we had actually bought this one. Um, this one's touch tone. Um, it's a really good looking phone. The, the touch tones work really well. Parts are also the same internally as um, the other phones that we looked at. Okay, so that's the trim line. This cannot be converted to a, um, you know, to a uh, table model unless you put a different housing, but, you know, guts are all the same. Okay, we're now going to get into some non-Western Electric. So everything we've seen up through now is Western Electric. These are now the newer generations of phones, and these do not have bells in them. But this is an AT&T desk phone. You see it's AT&T and no longer Western Electric, but... Um, Sound quality is actually much better on these. I mean, much better. These are, are really electronic phones at this point. Um, 
they they really did get better. I mean, from a, from a quality perspective, but I just kind of like the nostalgia of the old clunkers. Here is a trim line. This is probably from about the 1990s, also because it says Lucent, because Lucent took over and was big in the 90s, and the trim line had the you know the Lucent branding as well as the Lucent buttons, and so this is probably from. Oops, hopefully it works. This is from probably the 90s. I don't think there's date codes on here like the other ones did. I, I haven't been able to decrypt them. Um, here's a trim line, and this is one that has full features. So you say, what the hell is a full feature? Well, you got the hospital, the police, and the fire that can be programmed in here. You also have um, mute and redial versus this one has redial and mute, but it doesn't have the presets. Okay, so this one has a little bit more, and this has, um, you know, there's a program button and memory, touch tone and dial pulse, that's what DP means. Anyways, this is from the 80s, this is very late 80s, and that's the late 80s AT&T logo. These are very good phones, and you had a volume indicator on the side. Okay, um, this is wall mountable, you could also use it on the desk, so they, you know, sold phones that could be used, uh, you know, you could use them anywhere. And then I have a couple more left I want to talk about. Here's another trim line. Okay, I guess this isn't all that different, but uh, here's another trim line from somewhere in the 90s. And there were a lot of these nostalgia phones, and these are, this one's actually made okay, but a lot of these are just garbage, quite frankly. I mean, you can get a phone for a dollar, you can still get them for a dollar, but um, a lot of times these novelty knockoff type phones just, they, they didn't hold up and work really well. This one was actually pretty good. I have to say, this one's worked well, and I don't even think I've really used it, but this is, um, this is something that you would expect to see in the late 80s, so I, I think I probably received this as a gift, and I don't even think I ever used it, so. So anyways, I've got a mess here, i got to clean up, but those are, that's my telephone collection, and that's Western Electric and a couple of the newer ones, so um, hope you found it interesting. Got any questions, just post, post it on uh, YouTube here. I'll talk to you guys later.